Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about AR-15s chambered in 762 by 39 and whether or not it is worth it to you as a US consumer to spend your money on a rifle like this or if you should just do what a normal person would do with some class and to just get a fucking AK. Now I love shooting my 762 by 39 AKs. They have quickly grown on me to be some of my favorite rifles that I own and the caliber itself, 762 by 39 has grown on me as well. And I think that it is a very capable fighting rifle cartridge. I don't think of 762 by 39 any less than 556 or 223. I think that both of those calibers and cartridges are kind of interchangeable between the two and are both very capable and have proven themselves all across the world in war zones since before many of us were born. I think both rounds have their benefits, like 762 by 39 does very well when it comes to penetrating barriers and thick brush like what you see behind me back here, versus 556 shoots a lot flatter, it's a lot lighter and carry more of it. But overall, I think both generally do the same within combat distances, AKA between zero and 400 meters. That being said, I still think that 223 and 556 is the caliber of choice for anybody living here in the United States. States. Not to say that 762 by 39 is like super rare, but it is getting a little bit more expensive where it's around the same price as good 556. But like I said before, 762 by 39 556 are interchangeable for me, so I train with them in the same manner. The only downside is 545 and 762 by 39 is not like 10 cents around it anymore, so you can't just like carefree <laughs> dump into trash anymore. Now, when it comes to 762 by 39, the rifle that typically people think of is not an AR 15. It is the AK, the AK-47, the AKM, what have you. But generally when people think of that cartridge, they think of Russian guns like the AK. They also might think of the SKS, which is another one of my favorite kind of surplus guns to shoot. But between the SKS and the AK, those are like what most people think of when it comes to that caliber. And that is like the only two guns I have ever shot with some 6.2 by 39. I've never shot any other type of gun, not including the Galil. The Galil is still an AK. I've shot a 7.62 by 39 Galil. But between the AK and the SKS, that is my experience shooting this round. I've never shot it out of an AR-15 before today. Um, I just got sent this rifle from KAK Industries, not to be confused with Knight's Armament Company. But KAK hit me up in an email and they asked me if I wanted to try out one of their guns and put it in a video. And I kind of went through their website and saw, you know, kind of like budget friendly ARs. And then I saw that they had 762 by 39 guns. I was like, hey, that might be a little interesting. So yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, can you send me the 16 inch variant? Cause I wanted to compare a 16 inch uh, AR versus my 16 inch Magnum Don. AK-103 and just kind of see how they both compare to one another. As far as I'm tracking, 16 inches is the optimal barrel length when it comes to 7.62 by 39 versus 20 inches when it comes to 5.56 or 223. What's kind of cool about this is when it comes to this caliber, you can get a lot shorter of a barrel and still kind of get its peak performance because 7.62 by 39 is not reliant on velocity as much as 5.56 is. It relies on its mass. It is a big round. That is why I say like 12 and a half inches out of like an AK-104 type of rifle is one of my favorite barrel lengths when it comes to AKs, but I wanted to fairly compare, you know, a 16 inch AR with a 16 inch AK, both using like the optimal barrel length for the round. But with that being said, if you're gonna choose to shoot an oddball cartridge like 7.62 by 39, and I struggle to say that because 7.62 by 39 is still a very popular fighting cartridge across the world, still being used in war zones across the world today. But here in the United States, it's still not as common as 5.56, so it's sort of a oddball cartridge here. But if you're gonna choose to shoot it, should you choose to shoot it out of a rifle that was designed from the ground up to shoot that round, or should you still stick to the good old American AR-15? So that is what we're gonna try to answer today. But before we get into it any further today, guys, I just wanna mention that today's video is sponsored by Venture Surplus. Venture Surplus is the place you wanna go if you're looking for a very high quality, specifically US surplus gear. Maybe you're trying to LARP it out at the range with some throwback GWAT kit, or maybe you're trying to gear up for a Milsom event, Venture Surplus is the place to go. They have a huge selection of gear on their website from Eagle Industries 
Industries pouches. So if you're trying to build out that GWAT kit, they have all the pouches you need. And what is more interesting to me is their medical section. They have a huge selection of legit medical gear from North American Rescue, from tourniquets, all the way to fully built out IFAX. If you want to pick up any of this stuff, I have a discount code for you guys. If you go to the website and use code BLUEJEAN10 at checkout, it gets you 10% off your entire order there. So go to the website, use my code, pick yourself up some quality military surplus or medical gear. A big thank you to Venture Surplus for sponsoring today's video. Also guys, I want to mention Badlands Ammunition. If you're looking for a very high quality ammunition, go check them out. They have a discount code for you guys. If you go to the website and use code BLUEJEAN at checkout, it gets you a discount there and it helps me out because the more ammo you guys buy, the more ammo they are willing to send me. So go check out Badlands Ammunition. All right guys, so the first thing that we're gonna be testing out today is accuracy. And one thing that should be noted is that we're talking about 762 by 39 here. It is not exactly a long distance PRS type of cartridge. And you also have to consider that we're talking about ammo that was made in some type of shithole Eastern European factory. So the quality of the ammo is not gonna be as good as stuff that you can get from like 556 or 223. With that being said though, AR-15s are inherently more accurate than AKs. How much of that matters? I always say that AKs within combat distance are generally gonna be able to outshoot the shooter but overall AR-15s, especially some, you know, that has a free floated barrel are going to have the potential to be more accurate. So that is what we're going to be testing out right now is I have a target behind me set at 50 yards and we're both using similar type of red dots. I have an EOTech on this AK and this Holosunt Ames on this uh, 7.62 AR from CAC. Um, this, you know, I don't know if you've paid attention to the internet as of late, but me using a Holosun makes me a traitor. So we're gonna be using the Evil Holosun on this AR and the EOTech on this AK. Both are fairly comparable optics. And we're gonna see what the accuracy looks like between these two rifles at 50 yards. So let's go check it out. One thing I'd like to mention is you might be wondering why I'm using these little NC 20 round magazines. So this is the magazine that came with the gun. And when they first hit me up to do this like video, I asked them if they would provide some 762 by 39 AR mags. And they said, sure. And uh, they sent me like four or five of these 20 rounders, no 30 rounders. Beggars can't be choosers, but that is the reason why I'm using these 20 round mags as opposed to 30 round mags. Eventually I'll get some 30 round mags, but this is what I'm working with here today. All right guys, so we're going to get a five round group with the 762 AR on that left circle that you see on the target down there. And once we get that five shots off, we're going to do it again with the AK and then compare the two and see which one's more accurate. All right, that was five rounds with the AR. All right. Let's see what it's like with the AK. All right, let's go ahead and check the accuracy. Well, I'll be damned, the AR did a better job than the AK. Um, still fairly similar. I felt when I uh, kind of winged this one right here, um, but I did get majority of them in the black at 50 yards. But as you can see here, um, just cold right off the bat and did a better job with the AR. Um, so kind of not surprised by this. And I don't think any of you guys should be surprised by this as well. The AR is generally more accepted to be a more accurate platform than an AK. I felt like if I actually just slowed down a little bit more, I could have got that one in here as well. But in this one test right here, the AR did outperform it. But let's go ahead and move it on to another test right here and see what it's like to shoot this thing a little bit more dynamically. All right, guys, so now we're going to continue on and do one of my favorite drills, and is the 100-yard carbine proficiency drill. So at the bottom of the hill there, at 100 yards, I have a steel target. I'm going to make two hits from standing, two hits from the kneeling, two hits from prone, two more hits from the kneeling, and then two more hits from the standing and see how fast it does with the AR versus the AK. So let's go ahead and do it. Alrighty, in three, two.
and my time was 3070. So that's how long it took me with the 762 by 39 AR. Now let's check it out with the AK. All right guys, so 3070 is the time to beat. Three. All right guys, so my time for that was 27.52, so I did beat out the AR in that one. But honestly, if I was to reshoot it now that I'm warm with the AR, I could probably beat this time and then likewise with the AK, but point is, is it doesn't really matter that much uh, between the two and within a distance like that. So um, just kind of goes to show you that both rifles are fully capable of making hits at least at that range which is 100 yards but now let's go ahead and push it out a little bit further we're going to go up to the longer distance range and do a kind of a variable distance scenario between 50 100 and 200 yards and see what it's like to engage targets at those distances with both rifles so let's check it out all right guys so now we have the variable distance drill this should be a fun one behind me i have steel targets i have one right there that's roughly around 50 yards and then the one down there I know is at 100 yards and the one way out there, it's like a white steel target on that back hill right there, that's at 200 yards. And we're gonna be starting off here at the top of this mule right here, the trusty mule. We're gonna make two hits at that 200 yard target, hop down off of here, and then from here, I'm going to make two hits on the 50 yard target and then two hits on the 100 yard target and see how long it, or fast it takes me. And then we're gonna compare it to the AK, so should be fun. All right guys, so totally made up and non-scientific drill in three, two, one. All right. And that was in 1436, so that was pretty fast. Uh, now let's go ahead and check it out with the AK. All right guys, so in round two, now with the AK in three. A201. So they are beat it out in that one. Um, so fairly comparable rifles. I would say I did whiff it on one of those. And that was just me uh, not pulling the trigger as well. That's one thing I would say is that the AR is going to have a nicer trigger generally. And that is just with the stock trigger on that um, AR-15 back there. And not to say that the AK is a bad trigger, but you can also just like quickly swap the lower on that AR and have yourself like a Geisley trigger, which I didn't do in this video. I just wanted to keep it with the stock trigger, but I did feel like it was easier to squeeze off those shots with the AR-15 just because of its inherently better trigger. But um, I probably could have gotten a similar time with the AK if I just slowed down and made sure I, uh, you know, pulled the trigger when it was over the frickin' target. But fairly similar rounds. Um, both rifles are fully capable of hitting targets out to 200 yards in kind of a dynamic fashion, which is what you're looking for in a, you know, a fighting rifle. All right, guys, now really quickly, we're gonna see what it's like to shoot this thing kind of rapid fire. We got this dummy over here, which is totally shot up and I haven't painted over, but we're just gonna try to get rounds on that dummy and see how controllable this rifle is. With 7.62 by 39, this is a pretty lightweight AR, you know, with a lightweight handguard and stuff like that. So it does feel a little bit more snappy. One thing to say about my AK, I did swap the muzzle brake on it before I hit that DTK-2 brake on it, which is very, very good at quelling the recoil of 7.62 by 39. So I swapped it out to this one that you see right here. This is the uh, fighter brake. Um, can't can't remember where it's from. I, it will, I'll put it down below here, but this is the fighter brake. I use this thing on my AK-104 mainly, and it is mostly a flash hider. I wanted to keep it 
pretty comparable without having the massive muzzle brake on here because I don't have a muzzle brake on this AR. I just have a A2 flash liner on here. So let's go ahead and see what the recoil is like. Kind of shooting this thing pretty rapid fire and then compare it with that AK that doesn't have a serious muzzle brake on it. <laughs> 20 round mags, am I right? So overall, that felt pretty jumpy, at least compared to like a 5.56 AR. Now let's go ahead and check it out with the AK and see if the recoil is any different and without any type of serious muzzle brake on it. All right, now with the AK-103 in three, two. Let's do one more take. Just run that mags. Gotta give it to the AK on that one. It felt a little bit less jumpy. Um, it might be due to this muzzle device on here, but this is not a serious like muzzle brake, muzzle brake. It's mostly a flash header again. I would say that this is maybe a little bit more effective at coiling the recoil than the A2 flash header on it. But there is something to be said about that long stroke gas piston system. It doesn't feel nearly as snappy as the AR does, but you know, if I sw swapped out the muzzle brake on that AR, maybe in the future, maybe I can kind of like tone it down a little bit, but I got to give it to the AK on that one. Did feel a little bit more controllable with shooting it fast. All right, guys, now that we've got done doing those stupid little tests, well, should you get yourself a AR-15 chambered in 7.62 by 39? Uh, the AK guy in me says just get an AK, but I do get the, pra uh, the practicality of getting yourself another AR platform chambered in a different caliber. The kind of thought process I have behind this guys is like, if you want to go into like a kind of a doomer scenario, having another AR type of rifle that has interchangeable parts for the most part, not, inc not including the barrel and the bolt, because the bolt and barrel are definitely different than you know your 5.56 ARs, but the hand guard, the lower receiver, uh, the charging handle, all that kind of stuff are interchangeable with an AR-15. So if it was like a end of the world type of scenario, you could kind of keep this thing up and running for the most part, not saying that 762 by 39 bolts and stuff like that are a common thing, but that is also something to be said, like maybe uh, there's an ammo kind of shortage and you do find a place that has 762 by 39 and having an upper chambered in that cartridge could be useful, but I would also argue if you found a place that had a bunch of 762 by 39, what are the chances that that person has an AR chambered in that caliber? or an AK or like an SKS or something like that. One thing I would say though, is like your choices when it comes to companies or good companies that make 7.62 by 39 ARs, kind of, there's not as many of them as like good companies that make 5.56 guns. Now, when it comes to this particular gun from KAK, it has worked well for me. This is not meant to be a review of this gun. This was just, you know, for the concept video of a 7.62 by 39 AR. Um, I will have a review on this gun in the future when I have enough rounds on it. They didn't provide ammunition. All the ammunition that you've been seeing me fire today was provided by me. Um, so it makes it kind of hard getting like large round count uh, reviews on guns. Um, you know, in the future, I will have a review on this thing when I have enough rounds to comfortably, you know, recommend this rifle to someone. Uh, I'm not saying that KAK makes bad rifles, but I just don't know enough about this gun to recommend it to you guys. There are a couple companies making some pretty interesting AR slash AK hybrids. Most of them are just like AR 15s, but I know like uh, PWS makes an upper that is piston driven. Um, I've heard good reports about those. You also have the CMMG mutant, which actually is kind of cool because the lower allows you to accept standard AK magazines. And that is one thing I'd also like to mention is the magazine. So if you choose a rifle like this, that is a standard AR lower with a 7.62 by 39 upper, you're gonna have to be using uh, AR-15 mags and 7.62 by 39. And these ones are from Duramag. Uh, these ones seem reliable, but these are just the 20 rounders. I really wanna test out more 30 round AR 7.62 by 39 magazine. So I'm not really sure like how reliable these mags are, but one magazine that I can say is reliable are these ones I'm using in my AK. So these polymer Bulgarian magazines, I got these from Gun Mag Warehouse. So if you need your magazines, go check them out there. I have a link down below. But these have worked out really good for me for a very long time. I probably have had this magazine right here for a couple years now in a couple different AKs. So that is one thing to be said. If you get a AR, 
chambered in 762 by 39 make sure the magazines that you're getting for it if you're going to use this rifle for anything you know serious where you might need to like trust your life with it you know make sure that the magazines are good what i would personally do if i was going to buy a rifle like this is to get one of those ones that accepts AK magazines because I know that these things work. Well guys, I hope I shed some light on this topic, at least from my perspective. You know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I am the guy who got a college degree and decided Army was the right decision for his life after all. So take my word with a grain of salt, but whatever you choose, that is totally fine. I would recommend just getting an AK as an AK guy, but if you really want an AR-15 and 7.62x39, you know, go ahead and try it out. Um, but again, you know, you're missing out on the Clash and Cobb vibes. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find some cool shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you want to get involved with the channel more directly, you got Patreon, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes into running a gun channel, and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.